So now that we've gotten a bunch of different sounds from the amp, let's talk about how we capture the sound. I always like to start with the 57, especially the first time that I use an amp. And the 57 is ground zero, all purpose, great sounding microphone. I like to get over to the edge of the cone. And some people use a flashlight so, so they can see the cone. I just feel where the, where the magnet, kind of the edge of the magnet, and put my hands like, I know that this hand is, they're equal. And that's kind of the edge of the cone. And that way, it's not too bright. If you have it in the middle, right on the cone, it's a pretty bright sound. And you might occasionally want to do that. I've got a Gretsch that's pretty dark sounding. And sometimes I'll move the mic over a little bit for that. But I find that most of the time, I get what my ear wants to hear, I get having the mic right on the edge of the cone, right about there. In addition to the close mic, I also like to use a room mic. And over here, I have a really nice ribbon microphone, which is a nice warm microphone. I'll record the ribbon mic on another track at the same time. This mic can help sound like you're in the room with the band recording because it's picking up a lot of the room back here and you get this big wide sound. Some people might try that with a reverb or a roomy sounding reverb. It's just not the same thing. Our reverbs are great as we learned earlier. We love reverb, but the room mic is its own particular thing and nothing sounds better than the real thing. So now we've set our mics out in the room and we've tested out the amp and we've gotten a few sounds. Now we're gonna get the sound to tape. We're gonna go through a mic pre and we're gonna record it. We say tape, but it's really Pro Tools. I've got my good friend Rob McNally out here, a great Nashville guitar player, and he's gonna record to a track that I have. So from the microphone, we're going to this API mic pre. And it's so simple. There's just a gain knob. And I just watch the meters in Pro Tools and back it off from when they're in the red so I don't go into the red. And the reason I'm using an API mic pre is first of all, they're simple. I got my one gain knob and that's it. And also they sound really good. And the way I learned about them is when I was starting to play guitar and whenever I got a good guitar sound in the studio, I'd always say, what, what, what are you doing? I said, well, it's this mic pre called an API. It's not the only great one, but it's one of the great ones. So now I'm gonna get Rob to play. I'm gonna set his level to tape. Hey Rob, if you'll play some power chords, I'm gonna set the level. It's important when you're getting someone's level that they give you their hottest level because you wanna make sure that you don't get things too hot because you can't fix that. That's too low. That's about right. Sounds good. Very good. Brother Rob. Hey. I'm going to roll tape and just let you go. You got your chart. Um, you'll hear, I think there's a little bit of click, and um, you'll hear the bass. The bass is letter A. Okay. Here we go. So Rob's got a nice warm sound coming out of the amp. It's really cool. He's got his tone rolled off on his neck pickup. Really, really nice. Real clear but dark, kind of chewy sounding. I love that. Now he's on his treble pickup. Kind of rock and roll Telecaster guitar. So the 57 is capturing a nice, fat, straight up the middle sound. It's really good. Really, really good rock and roll guitar sound. Doesn't hurt the hands that are on the guitar. have a lot to do with it. Now I think we're going to do a little funky thing and go direct and have you come in. We'll bring the amp in here and kind of do a Nile Rodgers direct thing. Yeah, for the for what you're saying, what well, you want to put it on here, I think it's good. And is your volume up all the way on your guitar? Yes, everything's up all the way. 
so now we're doing Rob's second guitar part, and we want to get a different sound than we had before. So we're gonna we're gonna utilize the direct out of the back of the amp. We still want to use the Fender, but we're gonna come direct out of the speaker simulator into a mic pre into Pro Tools and get kind of a cleaner kind of funky guitar part. And there's a couple different microphone settings on the back. I'm on number two, which is a little bit scooped. Number one has a little more mid-range. I'd like to hear what they both sound like. So I'm gonna have Rob start out playing on setting number two. And a few bars in, I'm gonna reach over here and I'm gonna switch to sound one. Then we'll see what we like. You ready? Yes. Here we go. Switching. A little more mid range. The great thing about recording direct number one, you can get two completely different sounds. And, you know, recording direct if you're in your apartment or you're in your house and you want to record really late at night and other people are sleeping. Um, it's just a great way to get things done. It's a really nice thing to have one amp that you can get a great mic'd up sound, but you also get a good direct sound. 